Hey guys, how's it going? Today is the day we're gonna go drag this 1930 Plymouth with a rumble seat that's been sitting here for I think 30 or 40 years. We're gonna go finish blowing up the tires and see if we get her on our trailer and see what we can resuscitate it. And if not, we'll find out what is wrong with it. We can't get the hood open because it is rusted shut at the moment. I don't want to force anything. So, without further ado, we got wooden wheels. Don't know if it's going to roll for us. They blew the tires up. You can kind of see where the, the cracking was. The wheels are locked up. We don't want to beat on these wooden wheels and damage them. The other thing is, too, we got to watch out for height. So we just are clearing this on the way out. So we can get a jack underneath it. We're gonna go see if any of the wheels roll and we'll start going from there. So I tried to jack that up. Both back tires are locked up. We got air in the front one. And again, we have a clearance issue. So I can't put dollies underneath it where it is because even when I jacked it, just so the tires are off the ground, the front was already hitting that cross beam going across. So we're gonna regroup. We have a stake. I'm gonna go hammer that into the ground. Try to put my snatch block, my winch, in that corner. I'm gonna to try to winch it out to the center. Let's see how that goes. So we're gonna go from the winch down to a hammered in stake with a pair of ice grips on it, hopefully to keep it from sliding up. Back to the axle. Let's see what we get. <laughs> There's a safe place to stand. <laughs> Probably right where you are. They're rolling. Yeah, now it's sinking in. The front tire is rolling. The back just decided to sink in. Which is good, I guess, because it's allowing the roof to have clearance. Yeah, we're losing the stake. I don't know if uh, <laughs> you want to stand there. Let's see what we get. Yeah, we got to regroup on that stake, I think. Half force, need counter force. So that goes all the way over to that green John Deere over there. If that moves before that does, we're definitely gonna have some issues. Let's try it again. <laughs> The stake just bellies over. Let's um, back off. We'll grab it a little higher. So that that is up top. We'll give her a couple more cranks and we'll see if that'll work for us. Only we need to live on the edge. She's going to go. <laughs> Let's uh, decelerate it a little. I think we're just going to bend the stake now. Well, there you go. That worked well. Okay, try number three. I think we got plywood underneath it. Help the ass end out. And uh, see what we got. There we go. That's got it. We got it.
You good on that post on the other side? Plenty of room, right? Yeah, there's plenty of room. Okay. That should be good to get the dollies under it. Yeah, see if we do a pirouette. Without sweeping the floor. Is that the problem You probably actually just push it backwards. Let me get the uh, it's, it's off the concrete, yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah, you wanna try to pull the front floor to see what we get. Yeah, I'll pull you push. to go off the trailer too if not just going for a drag i do believe i missed part of the clip of us getting that onto there i suck <laughs> but yeah let's back it up and do it over again we got that far so the dollies hit let's go see about getting it the rest of the way up in the air How do you make it off from side to side? I pushed it over just a bit. While you were going, I pushed it over. Okay. That should do it. All right. That thing is just enjoying looking outside the window. <laughs> it's like first time it's got to see the outdoors. Probably 25, 30 years. I'd say at least. Looks it, has the look. Just a layer of the dust. That's yeah. Like people writing messages in it. Here's the aftermath of the rebar. What's that cartoon where they're hanging on the... No, um... Buzz Lightyear? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're hanging on the back of the car? We'll see, we'll see if they can make it. Well, we made it back safely. I got the trailer back in and trying to get it ready to put on the lift so we can get into it. But the back tires are locked up, so it's not going to want to roll very easy. We tried dealing with that on the trailer. And the hood I cannot open because the piano hinge on top is frozen up. So let's go get some kind of penetrating oil on the hood. We'll let that soak and we'll figure out how these wheels come off. So I believe that's like a just a piano hinge going all the way down it. Let's go give a little bit of Kind of shooting blanks a little. Yeah, let's let that soak. Shouldn't hurt the paint. There you go. Alright, to the wheels. I do not see any kind of lug nuts that take the whole rim off the drum. We got to get to that drum and figure out how it's frozen. Generally, I think we, need, we change a tire on these. Looks like it's missing a clip anyway, but you would just undo these four. And I think you would take that rim off and it would split right here you just you know the, the hub would kind of stay still i don't know if we uh that might answer our question have a big 
A big nut under there would be my guess. Quit with the jokes. There you go. Yeah. Almost looks like a VW. Let's uh, get a jack underneath it and we'll also, <laughs> just for shits and giggles, make sure there's no emergency brake that is left on inside of it. If that was an emergency brake, where would I be? It'd be the lever right in the center right there, right? That one, I would guess. No, not on. All right, as we were. Who's making a still? I don't know if the drum is still gonna be attached to that and these bolts go right through the drum, the whole drum has to come off. If that's the case, uh, we, I don't know if we can get a puller on there though, you know? We can push against here, but we gotta be able to grab the drum. We can't grab the spokes, I don't think. I think we'll rip them right out. We'll look in the back and see if we have any kind of brake adjustment. Probably should have looked at that first, right? See if there's any kind of adjuster we can just back off. We're gonna kind of wiggle under here, let's see what we got. Looks like probably Blake, brake fluid was leaking out of there. Hate that. I wonder if these two guys are the adjustment. What do they look like? Did you say like three quarter, you think? And yeah, grab some sockets. All right, what's your guess? It's 15 sixteenths. Nope, sloppy. We got. Three quarters, is that what I guess? Three quarters it is. I would think, I don't know if it's gonna be a tighten, a loosen, a loosen, a tighten. They're probably cams, you know? That feels like it's the wrong way. There you go. Let's see if we get on the other one. Return, please. No. <laughs> There's, there we go. Good. There's actually two more. It looks like, I don't know if you can see, up there. Maybe there's the upper and a lower shoe adjustment. Let's try giving them a little bit of a crack too. Let me see if those uppers do anything. Gotta do something, right? Can you see? I can't see. work with them a little bit. They ended up having to put vice grips with a rag on it to rotate this one. I got some play out of it now. I think what you're supposed to do is you, you would think they would you know ground a slot on the back of this where you can kind of dial them in and, and lock it down but I think it's on the other side that you would do that. Maybe the top is to fine tune it. Let's see if we can get that wheel off of there and just get an idea what they look like. So you could shimmy that out of there now. There yeah, she's a little cruddy. It's a better look. Yeah, see what I mean by the adjustments down there? You would turn them here, probably for your rough adjustment, 
and the upper ones are probably just to fine tune it. So you probably just keep putting the drum on and off until you get it really close and tweak it. You think they just would have put that on the other side though, huh? Let's go see if we get any fluid pissing out of them. Oh yeah, they're gone. So they're gonna need wheel cylinders, which is to be expected. You know, all this stuff is gonna be, you know, they're all blown out as far as they're not even considered rubber anymore. <laughs> Falling out of them. That's what the uh, drums look like. I guess that's how you want to bolt it from the inside, I guess. Hmm. What do they do? Peen it over when they're done? Looks it, huh? Looks like they peen the threads over after they run the nut down. And it's just got a key. Yeah, it looks like a VW brick drum. No splines, though. Alright, so I'm going to go and do the same to the other side put that back on and hopefully it'll roll free and we could back her up onto the trail and get a better look underneath one thing i noticed there's no uh emergency brake cable going to the rear shoe so i wonder if it goes to like the transmission or the dry shaft to lock it from rolling and usually you would have like a lever that came down with a cable going across and you pull on the brakes there would be a bar in between it this lever would pull and it would open the shoes and hold it Back this side off too, but it's got like a eighth of a turn. Let's um, see if we sneak in between the spokes and give her like a whack on the drum. Looks like it's missing one of the ones on the wheels here too. One if one and each corner is missing. This side under the cap too had no uh, no cotter key in it. And the wash is floating. I don't know if somebody had an issue with it before. Oh, there was a little bit left of a key. I think somebody put a nail in there. That's on a taper. I'm gonna work on that a little bit. I think some love tap hammers might have got her to respond. Come on, asbestos, come out of there. Yeah, this side ended up putting up a bit of a fight. But we won. I think probably what they had, there was probably a jig that they threaded onto these threads where the cap was on, and it just pressed off on the center. But we're gonna go with that. I ended up having to go shave a couple of two by fours on an angle. I got them between the spokes. Like so, and so, and I put another board across them. I kept working it back and forth, and ended up having to spray some lube behind it because I couldn't get the wheel pulled off. But it rolls. We take a quick peek at the front. They were rolling going on the trail when we were pulling it, but they may have a lot of drag too. So, off to them. Good enough. And. Other than the flat. I think that one will be good enough too.
trailer rather. Get that out of here. All right, what do you want to do? You want to try working on getting that hood open or lift it up and take a peek underneath and see what we got? Uh, let, let that soak a little bit. Let's go lift it up and see if there's any surprises hiding underneath there. That should be a little easier to see what we got going on. Looks pretty similar to a Ford. Check out the wiring in there. What is that connected to? What is all that? On the end of the steering column, it's got a bunch of wiring. Maybe center of the steering wheel has controls. Just seems odd, huh? I haven't seen that before. That's the master cylinder right there, that little chamber, I think. Battery access through the floor of the cab. I don't think that's gonna come back. <laughs> Look how tiny that transmission is. Oh, there's the brake too. There's our emergency brake, which is that band right there. Good, if we possibly get it running, we'll be able to use that, free that up and use that for, uh, you know, parking lot driving. Look how tiny that trans is though. Hold on, let me. <laughs> That's my hand. <laughs> it's really the size of my hand, width wise. I don't know if that was like a speedometer cable that's missing. Something's not there that should be. You gotta figure out what's the horsepower of this thing too, right? The exhaust is crushed right here. They probably jacked it up. It looks decent though. I don't see anything sheet metal wise that's really blown out. I think half the car is wood anyway though. Not a copper line. Is that for fuel? Hopefully. Nope, that copper line is running to the rear brakes. And hopefully it's a copper coated line. That's probably our fuel line right there. Or nothing. Is that wires? That is wires. A tail light or a little bit of rust right there on the floor. Gets covered with carpet. No tailpipe, the brackets there. What is that? Like dog hair? I bet you an animal was sleeping underneath there and he got all stuck on there. Raccoon? <laughs> there was raccoons in there. And we haven't peeked inside the gas tank yet. That's in the rear. But it looks pretty decent for something that's, what is it, 93 years old? <laughs> right? All right, let's go let her back down on the ground. We'll go take a peek. I got a clothes hanger holding the muffler up. We'll go take a peek at what we got going on and see if we can get the hood to open up. Yeah, the fenders look decent. All right, let's go drop her down. I assume we get anything out of that. I don't want to bend them, but can you get it to move just a hair? Spray a little bit more lube on that. Too bad we can't like pull a pin and pull the whole thing off. Just decided.
maybe loosen up the, the grill support and have the grill pull forward a little bit and that pin can come out. We just get that hood right out of our way so we're not trying to bash it off the body as we're trying to exercise it a little. What we got? A little tiny flathead. Don't know if it turns yet. We haven't been able to get in there. Looks pretty complete though. Doesn't think anything missing. I don't know what that, what would have been there? Anything? Hmm. Let's go see what we can do to get rid of that. I got the bolt out of the front. I don't think rat support's gonna move it out. Let's see what we get. It's close. Okay, I'm out. Oh, there you go. Now, if one of you would help grab that, my back would appreciate it. That's the main question everybody's mind, including mine. Will it turn? So far, that's a no. It doesn't have a nut on the front of the crank. It's got for like a, a hand crank. Let's get the plugs out of it. Throw some oil down. It's definitely not going to hurt it. We're probably have to going to uh, have to go to him. Speak much? Have to go blow. Take some compressed air. We'll blow the crap out that's around the plugs, and we'll see if we can get them out of there. And uh, hopefully, come out of there. We can get a, a peek of what's going on inside. The other part of it too is. Anything that's liquid cooled, what has that done over the years? Was there anything in it? Was it put away with antifreeze? Put away with water? Was it drained? Is there anything in it? Let's go see. Ooh, it looks horrible, huh? As much as in that top is really corroded though. That, that right there. We're gonna let pick at it too much. That could use a good boiling. What is that little tube right here? Is it like a vent or something? To get trapped air out of it? Yeah, is it like any hoses removed from it? Is that that copper line right there? So it's an overflow internally? So it's got an overflow. So like a regular cap that came out of the top, it's internal, goes through and it looks like it shoots down the side. Is there a nut? Go get in there. Is there a nut in there? It's just the, I don't know if you can put a big socket on it, you know? What do you see? I think it's got a, possibly. I wonder if we can find the hand crank in it too. Maybe there's one sitting in the car. You can use and kind of get on there. All right, screw, screw with those plugs. Let's see if there's a number of those wires. What? Throw that anywhere. One, two, three. A 7A spark plug. An odd size. Maybe for not back then, but there is now. Let's see what we get. Hopefully there's not a bunch of rust on the end of the plug. That one looks pretty good. Let me get the other ones yanked out of there. That's number one through four. They all look pretty good. I don't see any oil or anything on any of them. No any oil. Any rust on any of them. I got plenty of oil. Maybe a little too much. It's got carpet build up on that one underneath it. But I'd rather see that than a pile of rust. 
All right, let's go suit. Let's go suit. Go shoot some oil down those cylinders. So those who don't know, this is called a flathead, and all the valves are in the block facing upward. So the pistons and cylinders are like right here, here, on this side, and the valves are kind of below us where these manifolds are. Where the pipe goes in is where the valve is kind of lined up. The intakes are in closer, and the exhaust is on the outside. So I want to try to get the little lube over to the side there where the cylinder is so I can get that to go down around the rings. I still got to try to figure out some way to turn it. I don't want to use the starter yet or try the starter. Get a little bit of oil on those. Let's um, see if we can get a socket on the front of that engine maybe. Actually I said I think we were going to go look for that hand crank right? It might not have one in it. But we can take a peek at the interior. It looks pretty decent, really. It's got a hand crank on that back window. I don't know if that's going to do anything for us. Yeah, I'm not going to mess with that. I would think if it's anywhere, it'd probably be behind the seat. Let's get some of the, let's get some of this crap out of here. And our battery should be down there. What's this thing right here? And a screwdriver. Does our seat flip forward or anything? How does that work? From the bottom? Up? I don't know. You tell me. Can we peek? I don't see much of anything back there, do you? Okay. Get in there. <laughs> really? Alright, let me get your fat head back out of there. <laughs> no. No hand crank. So curious what was the end of that steering box. So you got a couple of controls here. So what would that be? Like spark advance? I would think either maybe start like crank. Would be one of them. It wouldn't be throttle though, right? It's not that I moved them all over. We have no idea where it needs to be. <laughs> all right, let's um, take a peek in the back real quick. Make, would make like a little compartment or something. Right here. Nope. I think we're gonna end up making something. Yeah, see what we can come up with. Try to figure out how to turn that. How many were yelling under the seat? How about under the seat? Let's come out. So. Nothing. Can we see right into the trunk? The rumble seat? Yeah, it's open right through. I threw the piping back there. All right, as we were. Well, I'm guessing we just need to make like a T handle and have like a post go across the end of it. I'm gonna go with something like that. And then we need a little something. To... That's probably a good size. Go cool. fit that on there. Actually, it's got to fit through that hole though in the front, right? Not that we can't cut that. Get a little shorter. Grab that. We'll grab that. 
That's that little one right there. I'm going to grab that. Oh, that's too thin. And that. See if we can... What? Then go fit through there. We'll just weld that onto the end of there. And then we'll probably put, like, maybe vice grips or something for now to see if it'll turn. I don't know if I can get you in there, but let's see if we can do it's even gonna work for us. Really? <laughs> yeah, knock off about into that bottom it out. Murphy's law. Any better? Alright. Let's go throw a wrench on the end of that. Let's see if we can get I don't know, keep going. Kinda. The nut just broke off the end of it. Uh, no, the weld broke. <laughs> That's what happens if you try welding stainless with a uh, little steel. It did turn a little though. That's good. Let me go fix this up a little bit. Yeah, I got it re-welded, but I didn't do a great job. She's been on an angle. Let's uh, mark the pulley. Not that you can see it, but I can see it. Let's see what we get. Let's go uh, kick you over right here. Maybe you can. There you go. Right, let's go throw a wrench on that again. And the goal is to try to make that pulley go all the way around without smashing into something. What'd you do with the wrench? You took it. I saw you. Too bad I can't turn it backwards. It just slips off, you know. Probably could stick the belt off too, so we uh afraid of it. I welded it on an angle. Damn it. Go. You see a crack. I'll show you in a second. There's a crack on the um, like the water pump housing. We did make it all the way around though. Good. Let me go. See if I can get one more rotation out of it. You get it? Where's the mark? I can't see. Let's 
see what that crack is? I'll get you there. Yeah. Right there. Some water pump, huh? At least it's not in the block. It's just on that pump base. Not that. I'm sure that's easy to find. All right. Let's uh, get that out of the way. And I wonder if we could try hitting a little bit of voltage to that starter. We'll see if that starter does anything. I just so happened to have bought a new six volt battery too. So I think there's probably a pedal or something inside on the floor. You push this linkage down and it would push that button on there. So let's go put, I gotta double check the voltage too, huh? Negative ground or positive ground? What's your thoughts? We also should uh, make sure there's some oil in it. There's some oil in it. A weird dipstick, huh? Six quarts. All right. Yeah, let's go get uh, jumper cables and we'll run it to the battery on the floor instead of put it in the car right here. Starts up backwards. Right. I'm going with positive, negative as is normal. No key on, so in case I do screw up, it shouldn't screw anything. See if we get anything. <laughs> it arced. Come on. Performance anxiety. I hear you. Let's go try to find a better way on the top of the bolt. Let me hold it down so you can get a get any spark. I think this one's gonna fight us the whole way. I'm sure not gonna be able to start it with that hand crank I made. <laughs> let's um do you think there's any linkage in there that needs to be hit also? Let's go see what I got for I wonder if this is just part of it. It just makes contacts and then there's a uh, a mechanical um, for the Bendix. We're gonna go look inside the cab. Should be that one. I think we got brushes on the inside that we can kind of can we fire that annually? Yeah. Shall we try tapping on the starter? I don't think that's the greatest of ideas, but I think we give it a little bit of love tap on the side there, see what happens. Alright. Try to fire that. Yeah, good power going to it. Another one should be good. There she goes. Let it run for a second. I'm gonna get a little bit of oil. There's a, I see an oil cap right here. Let's go dribble some in there to help save that bearing. There's the one in the front. I throw just a little bit of lube on those pivot points. I don't think we're gonna hurt anything, right? All right. Let's not try to engage it, but we'll. Getting faster. <laughs> Wanna try it? See what we get. <laughs> Boom. 
Just no balls. That is a new battery. Who says it's got a good charge on it though, right? Let me, uh, we'll give it one more shot. Yeah, it just kind of clunks. Is this a little access to the brushes? Yeah. They look pretty cleaned up now. They look terrible. Probably hook a battery charger or something up to it too. One more shot. Can't get it with my hand. I'm gonna try to get like a lever or something that we could work that a little bit easier so I'm not muscling it. Threw a pair of ice grips on there and I switched the polarity. I do believe it's gonna be positive ground. Uh, I'm looking at which way the fan spins to bring air across the radiator. And so it's gonna be, I guess if you're looking at the front of the engine, it's gonna be clockwise looking at it. So for the engine to spin this direction, the starter needs to spin this direction, right? Let me go see what we got. Yeah, so that's spinning the right way. That's spinning, is that right? <laughs> that's why I didn't want to hook anything else up besides that so that we can try to figure out which way it's supposed to spin. We'll give her a little. It just does not have enough balls to. Getting faster. Give her a little bit. It's like shifting gears. I just went, I'm trying to eye the fan. If I get the fan just to bump a little bit and turn. <laughs> Does it show I've never worked on one of these before? turn it that way. It's going to make the motor turn this way. I, I do believe I have it right. Yes. The life of a dyslexic. All right, so that is spinning that way, which is going to make the motor turn that way. I believe we got it correct. So, yeah, so it's going to be positive ground. Uh, I think we'll look at the battery charger and we'll throw that on there and probably give us a little extra boost. It is a six volt charger. Worst case, you could bump it over to 12. But. I wonder if it's got four brushes or two. Sometimes, let's go give them a little push. Sometimes you can give them a little love tap. I think it's probably just two. I don't see access to the other ones. See if that's any better. Yeah, we got the battery charger. Well, for a new battery, it's definitely taking a lot of voltage. So, Who knows how long that was sitting on the shelf, too, right? All right, give that a give it a spin first and listen to it. Sounds better. All right. Anything? There we go. Okay. The uh, bottom pulley's turning. It was, but the um, the fan was not. Let's go get this belt off of there. Let's go loosen the bracket up, get the belt off because the, the water pump's locked up. I'm sure because of that, you know, it's cracked. I'm sure the inside of it probably froze and blew out. Hopefully there's no other spots in the engine that, that did that. I'm gonna find out. 
The top bolt loosened up on it. See if that'll, yeah, that'll do it. Get that out of there. Definitely no, um, no fan spin for sure. How about the generator? The generator's gone. Good. All right. Get that belt out of our way. Hey, we'll try to get a crank out of it again. Let's go spin it for a second. Tempted to quick, uh, quick to kick it over to 12 volts. The thing with um, six volt and 12 volt cars, and six volt cars are are very particular on having really heavy cables because you're drawing uh, double the current for the same amount of work. So sometimes even like the jumper cables might not be doing us great because of uh, just the resistance going across it. We'll keep bumping it a little bit. Let me uh, switch you up over at the uh, pulley. Got a marks right there if you can see them. And it gets like a an eighth of an inch at a time. Once we get it to spin, I think it'll be okay. And it does, you know. I spun up my hand, it wasn't all that terrible. It should be, you know, you figure the starter is supposed to be able to spin that with spark plugs in it. We don't even have plugs in it, so there's no resistance for compression. So. All right. Real quick, I'm gonna bump the battery charger over to 12 volts and see if that helps us at all. battery charger just popped off. Like an overheat so it cools off. Put it back on. Back on six. Uh, I wonder if we're gonna have to go pull that starter apart try to clean it. Starter. Yeah. Should I pull that starter apart and have to go clean it? Uh, I'm also, you know what, let's go take the battery that's in it out of it because it's still hooked up I think. Let's go look. Uh, that might be causing a draw too, you know, it's a dead battery. If I'm trying to back feed the, the uh, dead battery, it's still hooked up. Why don't you tell me? There you go, yeah. Well, it's definitely, <laughs> if you would have looked at it to begin with, positive ground, it was positive. It's going right to the body. So we confirmed that part of it. All right, let me get those terminals off of there. I don't think that battery's going to fit in that hole, but we'll do our best to uh, circumvent Trying to date the last time it was run, you can probably you know, get a rough idea from the battery. So the codes you could punch out on it was 81 through 84. So my guess it's right in that. I would think if you're making a battery, right? And you got to punch out the date that it's made. So it's got to be around 81. And if it sat around a couple years, you would punch out the other ones, right? Because it's, it's when it goes into service. Only if the 81 sold. Yeah, so it'd be when sold. So I had to sell between 81 and 84. After that, the battery would be done anyway. So we'll call it 82 to be safe. Last time that battery was put in here was 1982. Who knows how long it lasted too. So, you know, a couple of years. I don't think it's any good now though. Just saying. Any fluid in there at all? Dry. As you get anything different with the battery installed. Actually, fits in there. I didn't think it was going to... Let's go try hitting that pedal. I think it's that one. There it goes. <laughs> Let's go check it out from the other end. Yeah, it's an education for me too. Never screwed with any cars this old. Until now. Let's see what it does. I 
in all four. The problem is though, as soon as I put my fingers over, it almost stalls the engine out. I'm trying to spin a little bit. Starter's not getting hot, that's good. Uh, I'm gonna put the battery charger on the battery. We'll put the plugs in it and we'll give it a shot. We'll see if it's able to spin it over. I got the plugs back in it. I have a feeling it's gonna go ruh, 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 ruh. See what we get. Not terrible. How, you know, how fast would it spin when you're trying to crank it with a hand crank, right? So. getting drawn. I gotta get that belt out of there. It's sucking the belt in and slowing it down. Watch. Yeah. Problem is it, I can't get it to clear the bottom of that pan underneath there. How am I gonna get that out of there? That's a lift the engine up do I? I hope the motor mounts are just kind of crappy and it's sagging down a little. It's right on the Straight on that cross member. I'm gonna try getting a floor jack underneath there. We'll try to push up on it a little bit. See if we can get the belt out. I wonder if that pulley's even rubbing on the bottom of the... It's close. You would never get the belt out, that's for sure. Yeah, I bet you it's motor mounts are just kind of crappy. Where are they? Gotta be something in the front, right? I only see there and there. The transmission's like that big. It's gotta be something in the front that helps the front up. So back underneath, there's a motor mount here, here, and yeah, right up in front is one, and I don't think there's anything left of that. Uh, and just kind of goo. So that's what happens, it collapsed. And there's no room to get that belt out. So I'm gonna go take a, we'll slide this under, we'll get like a bottle jack, we'll put a piece of two by four across the, the oil pan, we'll push up on it a little bit, see if we can get that belt out of there so it's not dragging the engine down. Where the car's lifting up. There it goes, finally. <laughs> Stuff's popping to make a noise. So you can wiggle that out of there. There we go. Let's go let it down a little bit. I don't want the front wheels so unloaded that it has possibly a tip into the side, you know. Yeah. Now it's just the engine moving. <laughs> Suspension didn't drop down at all. All right, we'll leave it like that. I right, get the belt out of there. Uh, this battery charge is off. Let's go see what we get. I'm not trying to eat the belt. I'm gonna throw the battery charger back on it though. And then we'll probably turn the key on and see what we got spark. I kinda doubt it, but let's go see what we get. Right, with the battery charger. Nothing. That seems pretty good. All right, let's go uh, just take a couple of the plugs out and we'll throw them on wires. See if we get anything. We'll throw that one on there. That one's from there. Just like one. Side of the block, get the dirt out of it. I can arc across a gap if there's no no gap, right? Go turn that key on, and we'll hit the starter and see if we get anything. I don't know if it has any other kind of switch that you would have to turn on for spark. Let's go find out. Didn't think it would. Uh, I see a red wire, like aftermarket, and that is going right to the distributor. So let's go see where that goes. Maybe it's hooked up to a switch or something. All right, 
There's our little red wire. There it is. Looks like it's, this is the coils under here, that's what it is. He's got a coil. I don't like to turn any more than that, right? What's the rest of this stuff? One's probably going to be choked. That's like a, it looks like a choke cable. And what's this one? Another cable of sorts. I would not expect that to do anything. There's fuses right here. And what we got on the dash? My guess is like one's going to be advanced. Any other throttle? Where's that throttle? That's crank. What's that going to be? Is that going to be throttle? I don't know. They turned down the charger a little bit. You can smell the fumes kicking out of her. Let's get her out of the red zone. Actually, on six volt, it looks like it's okay. It's in the middle. Let's uh, detune it a little though. Let's go see what our little distributor has to hide. Hope it's got points in it. Ain't that schnazzy, huh? Oh yeah, the little white corrosion that's on them. Yeah, they weren't gonna do much. <laughs> yeah. And the key's still on. Should be able to spark. There it goes. I guess I'll spark. Alright, we'll go turn that key off. We're gonna go file them up, clean them up a little bit. It's nice that it's uh, drawn, drawn an arc. That means you've got power going to it. Let's see what we can do with this. A little pick just to pick the outside crap off of it first. I got everything's made out of brass. Definitely tell the quality difference in stuff that we can get today. Clean my tool. Have a clean tool, right? I might get it. Let's go look. Give that one more rinse. Let's, uh, can I reach it from here? I want to try to bump it open, make sure we got a good gap. Decent. We're going to leave it alone for now. Learned my lesson trying to adjust stuff. That if that's how it was when it last ran. Sometimes it's better just to leave it alone. I'm going to adjust from that later. How's the cap look? It's got a hole in it. It's got a hole in it. I don't know if somebody made a hole in it. Kind of looks like it was drilled by hand, huh? I wonder if uh, it's just to let moisture out. We're in. Right, let's go. Click that back down there and uh, turn the key back on. Let's see if that plug will spark for us. Please, please spark. Please. Turn that key on. Let's see what we got. No spark. I wonder if we can get the coil wire off of there. I don't think I'm taped up. Everything's really brittle. I'm gonna try getting the coil wire off of there and we'll lay it up on top of here and we'll kind of eliminate. We'll see if we got power going from the coil at least to the distributor. Not to say these wires are any worth anything, right? Let's see if we can do that now. Oh, the end just came right out of it. And I dropped the spark plug. All right, let's go. See if I can let you keep myself. No spark. I flicked that ignition switch a couple of times. Took all the plugs out of it, so I'm not gonna fight that. Of course, you know, we, we need to get power coming out of the coil first. 
Then it gets distributed through the distributor to each one of those wires. So we're just kind of bypassing that. Let's go see if we get anything. Nope. Right, I'm going to go try cleaning those points one more time. And because uh, the points still, the points are working in conjunction with the coil. That's how the coil, uh, when the fire, the coil in turn sends power down to the distributor and then it arcs out to the four different wires going out. So they kind of work in conjunction with each other, but we don't need the plug wires as of yet, you know, functioning. I still think it's in the uh, points because if I grab them and like fire them, and work it just right. Swap hands. If I can get it to fire. I think it's just the amount of crud that's on them. Is there a condenser on this anywhere? Might be over on the coil side of it. Yeah, let me look at them and clean that a little bit better. Looks pretty good though. Decent spark. Yeah. That ran some paint sandpaper. We're gonna look right there. Crank us, see what we get. There we go. Now we're popping away. <laughs> I'm gonna repair the end of that, and uh, we'll put the plugs back in it. Actually, I might squirt a little bit of fuel down each one of them. And uh, we'll put the plugs back in it. We'll give it a kick over, see if it does anything. And let's just go see if those all four spark. So we're getting bad wires. <laughs> Looks like all four to me. See so a little for you. Get it in the hole. Little for you. Little for you. And a little for you. You got enough? I'm playing with fire right now because the power's still on. <laughs> It'll zap me in the hand. Think it'll go? I think it'll cough. I think it's gonna cough. I'll definitely say this is not run in. What do we say that battery was? So best case scenario, that battery is uh, in 1985 it was done. 95, 2005, 2015, 2025 would be 40 years, so like 30, 37. Let's go. Get you back a little bit and uh, see what she does. Get her, get you in the stand. Iron hole, hopefully. <laughs> that it? I already puff out all its fuel. You gotta figure out what the throttle is. Let's make sure we still got spark. go fine we're gonna go give her a little bit of fuel again I'd like to get it there run for like five seconds you know it did go though it did um the starter was off and it was still spinning I think she's gonna live patient's gonna live let's go give her a little bit more more for you more for you. More for you. If the carburetor was a regular setup, well, this is a regular setup for this. If the carburetor was up higher, I'd be able to feed it some fuel. What is it? Updraft? Downdraft? Which one is it? When the carb's lower than the intake.
we'll have to get that water pump to turn. Because if we can get the water pump to turn, we can get the charging system possibly working too. Because it needs the belt, you know? So let's get the water pump to spin. All right, let's go give her another again. I think that's all we're gonna be able to get at it on that setup. Let's go look into the fuel system. We know she's gonna go. No, we don't know, but it's looking good. Yeah. Uh, the choke is open. This is the choke. So whatever that is, that one runs the choke. And we got a throttle linkage going across. It looks like it's set on idle. I wonder if we can get that to open up a little bit. We wiggle that, we could probably look back and see what's moving. Anything on the wheel? Probably that pedal on the floor, that little. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna try dribbling a little bit of fuel in it through the carb and uh, crank it. Can we do that? Can I, get, can I reach both sides of it? I'll well, see what I can come up with. There's no air cleaner set up on it. I wonder if we uh, crack the fuel line off. I wonder if we can actually just access it. That's probably a filter right there. Let's go pull that out of there and see if we can backfill the uh, float bowl. Maybe we can get some fuel in it. It might be able to do what it's supposed to do on its own. What do you think the chances are of that? Dang, what do you think this is? So that's the intake. What would be tapping off the center of it? Going up and around. Vacuum? Maybe vacuum. Does it have vacuum wipers, maybe? That might be what that is. It's a port for uh, running stuff on back. All right, let's go pop one of these two lines off so you can get some fuel in it. We're probably going to take it apart anyway, but I just want to get it to play and run. Yeah, that one going from the side was a fuel filter, which doesn't look terrible. That's a good sign, huh? All right, let's go back feed that carb. I think we probably, besides that float bowl, I would think we've already get about half the bottle in it. Let's see if it'll take it first. It's pissing right out of, we pissing out. Yeah, it's, it's, it's literally coming right out of the base of the gasket right here. If you can stick your fingernail in the carburetor, is that a bad sign? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to go take that apart. Plus, I don't know if the, the float's stuck. That shouldn't, actually that should, that, that would inhibit this from filling right now. Okay, going slow. Yeah, the float might be stuck. Oh well, I wanted to try to back feed it a little bit. Let's, um, you, know, you want to do this, this setup here? There's a little bit of a fire hazard, but let's go see if we can get this a little feed. See, that's gonna piss out. Yeah, it's just gonna piss out on us too. That's the problem with a style carburetor, you know. It's, it has to draw, has to draw uphill. Actually, I wonder if we can. Uh, let's go crack this little port right here. <laughs> can we sneak? Can we sneak our way in? We'll add a little fuel injection to a uh, 1930 car. That open to us? Yeah, let's go give that a sh It's probably just gonna go, let's give it a shot. What can it hurt, right? I blow that thing up. Actually, if I, um, I'm gonna take this off, I'm gonna spin it right out of there so I can get a straight shot into the intake manifold. I'm gonna take out the threads, you know? There we go. I'll be down there if you want it. All right, let's back you up. I think we can get some fuel in there now. Now we'll get us some gas in the intake. Plus it runs downhill. Oh, it's just the right size too. Oh yeah, <laughs> we're good. Let's right, see if we can get it to keep going. Don't need that. And hopefully, I don't want to, I don't know if I want to reach over the spark plugs. Don't get fuel. Well, one way or another, I have to reach over, right? It's either for the fuel or hit the starter. Let's go. Let's go for like this. 
sucking my bottle right in. Let's go pull that out of there for a second. Did it flood itself? It started drawing on the bottom. The bottle like started collapsing. Or is it just falling right down back into the carburetor again? Yeah, it's pissing off the carburetor. It drew in that much. That's not good. It's uh, definitely going to be uh, a little on the flooded side. Make sure that choke is open. It is. And let's try to give her. I'm going to jam a screwdriver or something in to give her a little bit of throttle. That's a little, just a little bit above idle. Is it stay? Give it a little bit of air, you know, it's gonna get some air coming in. See what we get. You have no spark. Key still on? Sparks, but it's light. I would think there's a condenser here somewhere and they have a tendency to kind of crap out. Let's go pull these plugs out real quick, make sure they're not totally soaked. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to go take a minute clean these up. They need to be cleaned up before we even started. <laughs> hey, let's give it one more shot. Talk to me, Goose. crappy spark. We don't have good sparks. So I think it's what's kind of killing it. Now we got 
nothing again. That would do it. Can't go. It's got no go. Why don't you bump that gap open a little? Did something dumb like not put the rotor in it. No, it's in there. They are not getting a good spark. Simple as that. You guys set the nineteen thirty points for me. Lost it. Let's see, we lost either the coil or the condenser. I was looking for where the condenser was. I finally see it. It's underneath the distributor right there. I'm going to go take this lead off, which goes to the coil, and we'll probe from here to the block, and uh, from here to uh, power, rather, and we should see an on-off signal as we rotate that.